So over the next couple days, we're going to look at the addition postulates. We have a segment addition postulate that we're going to talk about today. And then we have an angle addition postulate, which we will cover tomorrow. Um, let's review a couple things, though. First of all, just measuring segments. The distance between two points A and B, all right, is one way to be asked to find the length of a segment or to measure a segment. Or you might see it um, asked this way, you know, to find the length or the measurement of a segment AB. Now, when you want the measurement of a segment, all right, you name the segment by putting the two points together, but you do not put a bar above it. All right, so no bar above. All right, that's how you would indicate that you want the measurement of it. All right, congruent segments. All right, if segment AB or the measure of equals the measurement of segment CD, again, notice there's no bar. So we're talking measurements, so they equal each other. Then we can say the segments are congruent. And then we would write that now as segment AB, the name of it is congruent to segment CD. All right, so no bar means measurement, they can equal with the bar is naming it. And then those segments are congruent. Midpoint, we've talked about midpoint. This is a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. When you have a line or array or another segment that intersects the segment at the midpoint, it's said to bisect the segment and it's called the segment bisector. All right, so in this picture, you can see we have a segment AC, and then there is a line, it's got arrows at both ends, that passes through point B, which is the midpoint. And how do we know it's the midpoint? Well, we've got our little tick marks, our congruent marks to show that it is such. So in the diagram, point B is the midpoint of segment AC, and line M is a segment bisector of segment AC. All right, again, you need the bar above it because the midpoint is not the middle of the measure of a segment, it's actually the segment itself. All right, so if you're asked or you're told that you have a midpoint, we solved problems like this before. If we're told that H is the midpoint of segment GI, it wants us to find the measure of just segment GH. So to do that, we first need to solve for X. Well, if H is the midpoint, then I know that the left side is gonna be equal to the right side. So that's how we set up our equation. 5X plus two is gonna equal 9X minus 10. All right, subtract 9x from both sides. So we have negative 4x plus 2 equals negative 10. Subtract 2 from both sides, and we get negative 4x equals negative 12. And then I'm out of room. Divide by negative 4, we will get x to be 3. Now, we want to find the measure of gh. So I'm gonna take 5x plus two, and I'm gonna substitute the three into it. And we get 15 plus two or 17. So that is the measure of GH. Okay. We can also, of course, check mentally if we put three into this side, right? We get 27 minus 10, which will also be 17. The nice thing about solving equations, you can always substitute in and make sure that you've gotten the correct answer. So that was really review. We've done and talked about all those things before. All right, so now let's talk about this segment addition postulate.
Um, this says if we have points A, B, and C, and they are collinear, which means they lie on the same line, and we know that point B is the one that's between points A and C. All right, then, all right, let's draw a picture of this situation. So if B is the one that's between, that means A is at one end, C is at the other. Now it doesn't mean it has to be right in the middle. So I'm intentionally going to put point B a little off center. But what this postulate says is that the measure of the small part AB plus the measure of the other small part BC will equal the measure of the whole segment. So small part plus small part equals the big part. When it asks you to write a statement for the segment addition postulate, that's what it's asking you to show. Small part plus small part equals big part. All right, so we're gonna use this picture right here to answer the following. So it tells us that PQ is nine, that's one of the small parts. It tells us that QR is 28, that's the other small part. So it wants us to find PR, which will be the whole thing. So for this one, we're going to take 9 plus 28, and that's what's going to equal the measure of segment PR. So very simply, we add that together. 37 is going to be our answer. Part B, they give us the measure of segment QR, which is, again, one of the small parts, but then they give us the measure of PR which is the whole part. And it wants us to find the other small part. I hope it makes sense. All right, so 17 plus PQ would equal the 21. So with this math, what you're gonna do is end up subtracting. So PQ is gonna end up equaling four. All right, I do trust in simple problems like this that you guys can look at your picture and know whether to add or subtract and just show that simple math. All right, of course, we're gonna do mostly problems with algebra. So let's label the picture, all right? It says that the measure of segment EG is 71. Well, E to G is the whole thing. E to F is the 8X minus 17, and F to G is 5X minus three. So when you label, it's very easy to see Small part plus small part has to equal the big part. So we're going to add 8x minus 17 plus 5x minus 3 and set that equal to 71. Put our like terms together. So we've got 13x's minus 20 equal to 71. And then we can go side to side. So add 20. And then divide by 13. <clears throat> I'm going to get 7. Now, this did just say solve for x, so we are done. You can do a quick mental check by substituting 7 back into both of these and make sure that the two separate answers that you get total 71. All right, let's do one more. Again, label your picture. So they tell us the measure of segment TV, which again is the whole thing, is 14X minus eight. Measure of segment TU is 9X plus two, and U to V is five. And this time it wants the measure of segment TU. All right, so don't assume that just because this is the one single number that's given, that it, you're always going to add the two algebraic expressions together to equal that. Because if you look at your picture, obviously 9x plus 2 plus 5 is going to equal 14x minus 8. All right, combine those like terms. We've got 9x plus 7. And then start going side 
to side. So I'll subtract 14x, bring that to the left, and we're going to end up with a negative 5x plus 7 equals negative 8. Subtract 7. Negative 5x equals negative 15. And when we divide, again, we get x to be 3. But we're not done. It wants the measure of one of the smaller segments. So we're going to put 3 in to the 9x plus 2. And we get 27 plus 2, or 29. And then label that as the measure of TU. Okay. That's all we're doing today. We'll finish the rest tomorrow. You're ready to do the practice.